Amen. We are we are happy to to uh, introduce Dr. Joanne Zanatis. Uh, I will I will get that right uh, uh, for a program on, on nursing safety, which is actually sort of interesting to me. So I, I, I'm uh, interested to hear this, and I actually have a good schedule right now, so I can sit and listen to the whole thing. Sometimes on these we're not able to. Uh, uh, we're of course uh, recording the program, so we can put it up on our YouTube channel, uh, which is available for the community and everyone else and your students who may desperately need extra credit shortly. So, Dr. Santos. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Dr. Joanne Zanettis. I'm currently an um, assistant professor in the uh, nursing and health science department at College of Coastal Georgia, and I would like to um, thank my distinguished dean who is in the audience, Dr. Patty Kraft, please stand. She has been instrumental in me uh, coming here to the College of Coastal Georgia. I came here from Ohio. So it's quite an exciting experience to be able to come here and share uh, my knowledge on um, CUSIN and how to integrate it into the uh, course curriculum here at the college. So for those of you that are not uh, nurses, or some of you may be, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about CUSIN and, and how it came about and, and what exactly happened. And, um, and then we're gonna go back in time a little bit. I've been a, uh, a nurse a very, very long time. In fact, we'll be celebrating our 40-year class uh, reunion this year. And um, so I have seen a huge change in the nursing discipline. I have gone from the world of um, autoclaving, uh, syringes, autoclaving needles, glass bottles, glass IV bottles, and um, seeing the evolution of technology in nursing that has taken us into the 21st century that probably 40 years ago we never would have thought was possible. But um, like I say, I have seen a lot of changes and I know Many people out in the audience um, have seen changes in their lives from uh, when they were born to current, currently. Uh, my grandmother, who her one goal in life was to live in three centuries. She was born in 1899. She actually passed away in 1996, so that was gonna be her uh, claim to fame that she was around for three entire centuries. But um, she used to talk about how the change happened from, of course, uh, motor cars to uh, man on the moon and uh, the changes that happened in technology that she was able to see in her lifetime. So um, going back to nursing school, we say, okay, I want to be a nurse. Well, it's important to recognize that um, we don't really pick nursing, nursing picks us, and um, there's a certain type of person that becomes a nurse. And our um, goal for the quality and safety education for nurses was to challenge future nurses who uh, need to have a specific knowledge, skill, and attitude um, to become a profession in uh, the nursing discipline. And many of us that may or may not be in nursing, um, we have an orientation period for employees where they have to learn what it is they have to know about a specific job description. And they also go through training where they're gonna learn the actual content piece of their job or maybe they're gonna learn the um, uh, value system, are they a good fit for the company, uh, do they have the actual physical skills to be able to form, perform the job. So it translates into uh, many disciplines, not, not just nursing and it's actually what I would call a business model for probably most businesses. We just don't think of it as that because nursing has put a name on it. So going back to again, nursing, the overall goal for the quality and safety education for nursing project was actually to meet the challenges of preparing future nurses so that they can continually improve the quality and safety of healthcare systems in which they work. So they have a um, model that uh, the Institute of Medicine 
had come up with, and our CUSA faculty and our National Advising Board kind of got together and developed uh, what I call the six core competencies um, that was necessary for pre-licensure and graduate students in the um, nursing discipline. The six core competencies are patient-centered care, safety, teamwork and collaboration, quality improvement, informatics, and evidence-based practice. And it, as you see here, I have a picture of myself in, uh, actually this was taken um, in Disney World and uh, in Orlando, and they have become futuristic as well. They have a ride where you actually go into what we call Project Tomorrow, and they snap pictures of you as you're going through the ride, and then they make a video of you uh, basically looking like George Jetson going through space. So um, in looking back, that's kind of how I feel the nursing discipline has evolved. I mean, like I say, I've seen it from what I call archaic to, to now, which is you know, transformational. It's, it's absolutely incredible. But again, when you look at these six core competencies, these are almost like a, uh, a business model for any, any discipline. So we're gonna look at patient-centered care. And um, in that respect, we're looking at patient values, opinions, family, culture, and we have to recognize that the patient, our client, is in control of their own little world. They want to be part of it. They have to have what we call collaborative care with um, possibly their family, possibly with um, interdisciplinary uh, other team members. We are respecting their diversity in their own human experience. And so we need to see things through the eyes of the patient. I always say, like if you were to do a simulation, it would be interesting to see how the patient felt after you did the simulation. You know, we all know how we feel. That's our attitudes and our, how we feel after we've just gone through a code. But how does the patient feel? And how do the patient's family feel? And all of these um, preferences and thoughts need to be respected when we are um, looking, at, looking at a client or looking at a patient. And that goes hand in hand uh, when you're looking at the business model as well. Um, we look at stakeholders. We look at the stakeholder input, we look at satisfaction surveys, we look at um, all of the things that make us think, is this going to be okay or do we need to improve on what we're doing? We haven't quite got it right yet. So, so it's a continual evolution and like I say, businesses do it all the time. It's just nursing now has defined it as um, CUSIN. So next we look at teamwork and collaboration. Now this is a picture that was taken on our ropes course and it shows all of us holding each other's arms, going across a log, trying to steady, uh, excuse me, uh, I think we were, no, we were on a rope on that one. We were on a rope, going across a rope, and we had to all hold each other, and our one hand was on a um, tree, <laughs> and then everybody else was kind of holding on, and we had to stay afloat on, on the tight wire, if you want to call it that. So, um, if one person were to juggle, <laughs> then everybody would fall down. So it was kind of like a teamwork and collaboration effort to get everybody across the road without falling. So in nursing, we are functioning effectively not only within the nursing discipline, but other interdisciplinary teams as well. We are transparent and foster open communication, respect, and shared decision making to reach quality patient goals. And one of the things that um, employees, or, or again, the nursing discipline does, is what we call shared governance. <clears throat> that we're allowing the um, team administrators, if you call it that, and the team players to all be part of the solution of the problem or, or to identify um, any issues that may or may, may not be going on. And that shared governance allows for everyone to feel um, like, again, they are part of the team. And I know businesses, again, do this all the time when they have uh, their corporate meetings and they have brainstorming. You know, everybody, everybody's around the round table and comes up with whatever they need to come up with. Okay, next we go to um, safety. Of course, uh, as we're going across our rope, we had to be very careful. We didn't fall and tumble and, and, and break a leg. 
but we were all kind of holding on to each other. But in the nursing discipline in the hospital, we, we look at many things that can cause harm to our patient. As you see, my picture of the skeleton at Disney, uh, he's already bit the dust, if you want to call it that. Uh, my other picture is uh, someone on a, uh, riding a horse, and that person could actually fall. Well, in the hospital, there are um, multitudes of falls, and we always want to have our fall prevention programs. We have a multitude of medication errors which we try to, um, of course, nip in the bud, if you want to call it that. We have what we call a uh, barcode scanner at most facilities, I would think now. And it's a wonderful little, um, little device. I call it the zapper. Uh, we get to zap the um, medication book. We get to zap the patient's armband. And, um, and we go through and zap the um, pill, the pill, the book, and the patient. So, we have to make sure everything matches. If it doesn't match, bling, 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 you're, you're gonna get the little alarms and it's gonna tell you there's an error somewhere. Did you uh, record the um, medication correctly or are you, are you scanning the wrong patient? Are you scanning the wrong med? And it's supposed to um, alert the nurse to um, take, a double, take a step back and say, okay, Am I safe here or not? You know, do I have to override this? And it's very unwise to override any alarm until you actually go through your uh, six rights of um, medication administration to make, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, we have to be careful about infection. Infection is, uh, can run rampant in a hospital. And hand washing techniques are um, very important. They say that is the major source of preventing infection. And we have to prevent harm, of course, for our patient. We have to make sure if they are going to surgery or some operation or some procedure that the right patient is going and the right limb is being operated on and, and uh, they have what they call timeouts where in surgery they time out and they make sure they're doing something, the procedure, they're getting the right area. Um, so again, there's a lot of ways that in today's world, um, we promote safety. There are checklists, and the checklist, again, is another way um, for promoting safety. If you have um, a skill checklist, you're making sure you're following A to Z all the way down, and I know other um, business models, again, would have a checklist as well, again, to make sure you're covering all your bases. All right, we go to informatics, and, and this picture, again, was taken at uh, Disney World showing some of the futuristic um, pieces that are out there, and it's not all about what we call electronic health records. Everybody knows about uh, the mandate where they have mandated that our health records are transferable and any healthcare provider can find them online and, and, compare, and compare notes. So um, with that being said, the use of informatics and technology has evolved so much that we can communicate, we can manage our knowledge, we can investigate error, support decision making, and this would assist in a root cause analysis, specifically, again, even in a, in a business model. You can kind of find out through your statistics and through your trending um, what exactly is happening. And then, of course, uh, when, once we get our data or collect our statistics, there's what we call quality improvement or um, the risk management department. So we are using data to monitor the outcomes of care processes and use improvement methods to design and test changes to continuously improve the quality and safety of healthcare systems. And again, this is the use of a root cause analysis to diagnose the clinical issue. In this case, you see a picture of um, in our ropes course, we had uh, two large pieces of wood, and we had two different boards, neither of them extending from one side to the other. So we had to figure out how you could cross from one side to the other, and, and we tried many different methods of putting the boards together, and we realized, oh, okay, well, they're not gonna fit, and we're gonna overlap them, but somebody's gonna have to stand on each side of it, in order for it to be secure enough and not flop in the middle. So um, through um, testing and error and flopping in the middle, we kind of figured out how it was to be done. And, and that's a form of quality improvement. 
by continually testing and reevaluating and, and being that part of the nursing process. Evidence-based practice here is a picture of our um, group in um, service learning where um, they are working on, um, I believe, the teddy bear clinic and they are evaluating um, the things that are wrong with the teddy bear for the child. And um, through evidence-based practice, what I call, uh, there are three legs to evidence-based practice. That's going to be your um, patient family preferences and values. You're going to look at the clinical expertise and the current evidence. So you're going to look at basically current guidelines, maybe in the National Clearinghouse, uh, that have evidence-based guidelines that we can um, make sure we're using um, the most up-to-date practice. It's no longer what we call the sacred cow, where it's always been done that way, and it, I'm, I'm stuck, I'm stagnant, I'm not going to fix it, I like what I do, and if it's not broke, I'm not changing. Um, in this case, you know, we're, we're in the nursing department, we are trying to get all skills and all procedures based on evidence-based practice and not have them just be like it's always been that way. And I'm sure in the corporate world, they also have their guidelines where they're trying to do what best research So in the business world. All right, now here is a great example of what I call evidence-based practice. Here is where peanut butter, chocolate, has been put together to come up with Reese's peanut butter cups. H.B. Reese was a former dairy employee of Milton S. Hershey who began selling penny cups of peanut butter dipped in Hershey's chocolate. In 1923, Hershey bought his company 40 years later. A spinoff, Reese's Pieces got a lift when extraterrestrial E.T. proclaimed them his favorite in the 1982 movie, E.T. And it is currently ranked number two uh, as, a, um, as a favorite. Annual sales are 516,500,000 annually. So you can see where um, a little bit of thought and a little bit of practice can come up with a, an extraordinary product. And I, I know this is in the candy industry, but um, nursing can do, do the same thing. And we are doing that with our um, Houston integration into our curriculum, which, as many of you may or may not know, um, we have a 100% pass rate on our NCLEX scores, and that's uh, shown in our outcome data, and we hope to uh, continue that in years coming. Any questions? 